What's up everybody? It's Common Sense Investor coming at you with another video. In this video, we're going to talk about Citigroup, their involvement in the creation of APE, and did they have a plan B? Because as I was going through the document, and I've written my preliminary uh, statement, I've done a rewrite. This is the final draft of it, I think. And... To save y'all time, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but in the very beginning, the first paragraph, I attack how these people keep talking about the objectors as if we're such a small minority, and how they keep trying to group us and group us and group us till we're finally only one left, all right? And that's going to be Rose Izzo. And... That's just wrong. So I started off the preliminary statement with, Over the course of the past two months, thousands of shareholders representing hundreds of thousands of shares have submitted objections to the Allegheny AMC proposed settlement. They held their breaths in anticipation of the special master's report. This class member was one such shareholder. All right. And now to save you time, uh, the biggest takeaway from this is that there's two threads that run in this story. That number one, AMC was in trouble and needed help. And number two, AMC shareholders stepped up to the plate and saved AMC from imminent bankruptcy. All right, and then I begin to tell the story. And the most important thing about this is at the end of every page, I have to have a sentence that's impactful that makes the reader want to turn the next page and keep reading because this shit can get boring. But that's writing 101. The most important thing on this page is now, two years later, instead of remembering the sacrifice of millions of investors who rallied around and saved the company, retail investors are painted as the villain in the story. That's the impact I want to leave the judge with on page two. On page three of it, uh, I talk about how Allegheny and AMC consider us uh, financial terrorists that are holding the, co the company hostage and refuse to let them dilute. And then here comes Mr. Van Zanden from City. And I write, shortly thereafter, Mr. Van Zanden, AMC's lead banker with City for six years, provided background on the company's preferred equity offering. He explained that although the company was short on common shares, they still had 50 million shares of preferred stock which might be used to raise cash. According to Mr. Van Zandent, preferred stock offerings traditionally pay a high dividend or convertible and are sold to large institutions. Now, listen to this. AMC's board explained they were restricted from paying cash dividends due to the debt covenants. Mr. Van Zanden then proposed Plan B. The company could offer preferred shares to its retail stockholder base through a rights offering. He further explained that retail stockholders can purchase the preferred unit or sell the right which is itself a tradable security. He further shared the rights offering were a form of future dilution and that shareholders would be incentivized to buy the shares to avoid dilution. Listen people, I agree with that shit right fucking now. Adam Aarons, how many times have you heard people comment or say that well, can AMC, can we set up a fund and we'll pay and, and pay off the debt that way? No, he says. He can't do that kind of crazy shit. But you know what he could have done? He could have done a rights offering. He could tell us right now AMC needs money and that he's offering shareholders right now the opportunity to buy AMC rights at whatever price they set it at. All right, and they and we have that right, and we, it's convertible, like Van Zant said, it's convertible. So I'll hold on to that right until conversion, and I'll wait. And when that price spikes, we can be like the ones that are holding the notes and the bonds. Every time the fucking stock spikes, that's them converting their bonds and notes into shares and selling them on the open market. That's what kills every run up. But in this particular case, it would be us 
that are buying the shares of AMC. That would stop the dilution. And Van Zant told him, he said, "We, your shareholders will want to do this. And I'm like, fuck yeah, if you want to pay the debt down, let's do it like this. Just put out the rights, we will purchase the rights. Now, keep going. First, it was established AMC could in fact register and sell the new ape security. That kills the fact that was it legal to be done. Then, for whatever reason, Defendant Aaron and the board scrapped the rights offering as it was suggested by Mr. Van Zanden, deciding instead to perform a hybrid two-for-one stock split and dividend combined. All right, and I got a footnote number three, so let me read that to y'all. It's going to be Exhibit B. That's the uh, file. Sean Goodman speaking. The economic impact for AMC is expected to be essentially the same as a stock split. An investor owning one share, one AMC share with a market value of 15 after the dividend stock split owns one share of AMC, one AMC share and one preferred equity unit with a theoretical combined market value of $15. Sean Goodman told them this in their meeting. So I'm quoting that document. Now, why not go with what Citigroup suggested? All right. First, the, the preferred share. That was a good idea. We can't give a dividend with the preferred share. Okay, we'll scrap that. What about a rights offering? And they didn't do it. But Adam Aaron, even right now, could offer us the right to purchase an AMC share in the future at whatever the price is, so forth and so on. Y'all know the drill with rights. If you don't, tell me in the comments and I'll do a video on how rights work. But that's a perfect plan. But they say, oh no, we don't want to do that. We're going to do a two-for-one stock split and a dividend and we're just going to give them this in your ass. I keep going, but this video is already seven minutes. Let's keep going. All right, two years later. Two years later, we're the villain. They should have gave a rights offering. For some reason, Adam Aaron didn't do it. And on this page, the last of it says, The plaintiff in their original complaint contends that at the, this time, the defendants, Adam Aaron and the board of AMC, began to conspire with Ontar Capital and devise a, comp a course of complex and disloyal corporate engineering by the defendants with the purpose of overcoming shareholder opposition in the next corporate election. And then I quote what page that came from from the document. And instead of the at the money offering of eight being to raise needed capital, a game of 3D chess began against retail investors and the vote harvesting began. And then I'm, what I'm going to go here is I'm going to list what they were calling the track the vote and they were showing how concerned they were that they wasn't sure Vanguard and them hadn't turned in their votes. J.P. Morgan uh, had voted against them. So now what was they going to do? It wasn't looking good for AMC. And I'm going to put that in there right there. All right. Now, this is getting ready for Brian Tuttle. <laughs> Here's my first objection to the special master. Okay. The special master's opinion concerning the creation of AMC's preferred equity units. It is true. AMC theaters would be bankrupt and the doors shut had not retail investors stepped up to the plate and saved the company. And in her preliminary statement concerning the creation of AMC's preferred equity units, Special Master Amato stated, On the record before me, I do not have any reason to believe any AMC stockholder objected to the issuance or distribution of the apes at that time. This statement causes this statement causes one to pause. AMC stockholders, shareholders, have screamed with a loud voice our animate disapproval, not that APE was created, but that over 40% of our common shares equity was stolen from us by CEO Adam Aaron without any justification. Almost every objection submitted to the court concerning this case involves this fact. Also, class member Brian Tuttle's First letter filed 4-13-2022 mentioned how he filed a complaint on October 5th, 2022 with the SEC and AMC regarding the issuance of APE. 
On the same day, Brian Tuttle also emailed attorney Michael Berry, who is now Allegheny's lead counsel, stating that he wished to file a grievance against AMC Entertainment regarding its issuance of APE. So the special master is extremely forgetful when she says, when she states nobody complained about APE when it was issued. Think of it this way. How much, would, how much money is in your bank account? Now imagine waking up to discover 40% of your bank accounts missing. Would this be a concern to you? Or would you simply ignore the fact that you woke up and realized you were robbed? Therefore, it is inconceivable to conclude that this particular batch of retail investors would simply take the theft of 40% of their equity laying down without a fight. And that's the entire preliminary uh, statement and the first objection that I have to the special master is how she's saying nobody complained about the creation of apes. So right there, she's incorrect. All right. And with that, I'm going to be writing some more, reading some more, and updating you some more coming up. So love y'all. Be blessed. And I'll see you in the next video.